Which is the right major for you, mechanical or industrial engineering? This is what we will be talking about today. But before we get started, please don't forget to smash the subscribe and bell icon so you don't miss out on any future content just like this that's going to lead you to success. Obviously, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to what our passion is, but a lot of the times that might be an unknown until a later stage in our life. So it's important that we fully understand all of the implications that come with choosing a specific major. Mechanical and industrial engineering are two of the main branches of traditional engineering, and I gotta admit that both seem like attractive majors on paper. But let's dive deeper into the curriculum, job outlook, salary, and prestige to see if these majors are really as attractive as they appear to be so you can make an educated decision for yourself and not have any regrets about dropping 100 grand on the wrong degree after college. Let's start off with an easy question. Did you enjoy physics class in high school, particularly the mechanics portion? If your answer is no, you probably should avoid mechanical engineering because physics is a huge part of the discipline. If your answer is yes, and designing products like iPhones, cars, and airplanes sound interesting to you, then mechanical engineering is probably a good choice for you. On the flip side, if physics is not your thing, but math like statistics and calculus is more attractive to you, and improving a business or manufacturing product process to save time, money, and materials sounds cool, the industrial engineering is likely right for you. Again, this is just a preliminary evaluation to at least point you in the right direction of either mechanical or industrial engineering respectively. Now, in order to determine whether mechanical or industrial engineering is a better fit for you, we must first know exactly what these two things are. So what the hell is industrial engineering? It's a specialized discipline that involves predicting, evaluating, and optimizing any process or system such as a manufacturing line, a supply chain network, or even the layout of an emergency room floor at a hospital using math, engineering analysis, and design principles. Industrial engineers are essential to making any complex process involving people, money, knowledge, information, and equipment more efficient such that an organization can maximize profit or minimize costs. As an industrial engineer, you will be able to work in a wide array of industries including but not limited to aerospace, automotive, food, medical, consumer electronics, defense, finance, and manufacturing. Now moving on to mechanical engineering, what in the world is that? In a nutshell, it's one of the oldest and broadest branches of engineering focusing on the design, analysis, and manufacturing of mechanical systems to create products for virtually every industry, including aerospace, automotive, construction, consumer electronics, defense, food, medical, and energy. As a mechanical engineer, you will leverage your knowledge of physics, math, design, and programming to develop things like HVAC systems, airplanes, cars, manufacturing equipment, and satellites. Now that you have a high level understanding of both mechanical and industrial engineering, how does the curriculum for these two majors stack up against each other? As you probably can guess, both industrial and mechanical engineers take the general set of engineering core courses during their freshman and sophomore year, like math, which includes calculus one and two, multivariate calculus, differential equations, statistics, linear algebra, physics one or mechanics, physics two or electricity and magnetism, and basic chemistry. Moving on to the common engineering courses between these two majors, you will have to take programming with a common language such as MATLAB or C++ for solving engineering problems and an introductory design course and Tended to build a problem solving mindset, computer skills, and familiarity with the elements of engineering design. From this point on, the courses between these two majors will begin to diverge and become more specialized. So as an industrial engineering major, you will have to take a lot of classes with math, operations, and human factors as the focus. In the second year, you will have to take courses like economic decision making, introducing the relationship between time and money, business operations, financial valuation, cash flow analysis, and accounting principles. You'll also take operations modeling that will teach you how to mathematically model decisions with varying levels of uncertainty and solve these models using optimization, statistical models, and queuing processes. We also have human factors and ergonomics class, introducing how to evaluate and design a product, process, or system to work 
more efficiently with humans and improve the overall user experience. For example, this class will come in handy if you were asked to improve the efficiency of a manufacturing line as an industrial engineer. Some questions you might need to answer include how much space do you want to give between assemblers, where do you want to place the arbor press or SMT machine in relation to the worker, and where you want to include windows in the factory. This class will present problems involving computer displays, illumination, eye-hand coordination, as well as repetitive and high physical effort tasks. Moving on to junior year, you have to take some type of optimization and computational methods class emphasizing decision making for real world applications from transportation, healthcare, and other industrial domains using optimization models, computational algorithms, and programming. Next is intro to Markov processes, which in layman terms is a way to describe and predict a real world process such as a manufacturing line or traffic jam using math such as statistics and calculus. It's actually a very useful course that is used to solve common challenges faced by many businesses relating to reliability, maintenance, inventory, production, and queues. You should also expect to take a data analytics tools and techniques course teaching how to clean, manipulate, and prepare data for visualization as well as basic inferential statistical analysis and predictive analytics using Python. Finally, as a senior, there will almost always be some type of advanced simulation class covering complex discrete event systems with applications in industrial and service organizations. Topics include modeling and programming simulations using a high-level computer package such as ProModel or GPSSH. Like every engineering major, there will be a final senior design course where you work on a semester-long design project in industrial and operations engineering with a team that's generally sponsored by a company. Now moving on to the mechanical engineering courses. You will take Intro to CAD and Product Design, where you will design and prototype a physical product using CAD, simulation tools, microcontrollers, and various manufacturing techniques. Another course you should expect to take is Manufacturing Processes that introduces a wide range of manufacturing operations, including machining, injection molding, casting, and 3D printing. The curriculum will offer several courses focusing on materials, including mechanics of materials covering stress and strain, as well as a material science course that introduces how solid materials deform and fail at the microscopic level, as well as strengthening mechanisms. There's a 99.99% .99 chance you will take Mechanics 2 introducing engineering dynamics concepts like momentum, kinematics, kinetics, and energy. You will also take Heat Transfer that will teach you how to design heat exchangers and introduce the three modes of heat transfer, including conduction, convection, and radiation. Unlike industrial engineering students, mechanical engineering majors have a similar class called measurements and instrumentation, teaching how to design experiments involving measurements of various parameters like pressure, temperature, strain, and force using mechanical and electrical transducers. You will also learn all about data acquisition and how to analyze huge amounts of experimental data. Finally, Senior Capstone Design class will be the culmination of your undergrad studies and involve planning and completing a project with a team to design and manufacture a product containing electro-mechanical components to solve a problem in some area of mechanical engineering. You'll typically also be required to choose three to four advanced electives from a list of classes. And for any of you who are interested, this is the list of courses that we could take at my school. So to recap, the curriculum for both mechanical and industrial engineering is equal equally challenging. We see there is some overlap between mechanical and industrial engineering in terms of the curriculum. Technically, a mechanical engineer with the necessary job training could be easily hired as an industrial engineer without taking additional courses. Likewise, an industrial engineer could also be hired as a mechanical engineer if the role was more focused on process development. It would be more challenging, however, for an industrial engineer to go into a mechanical engineering role more focused on product development, although it's definitely possible by taking several mechanics, design, and manufacturing related courses. So the question to ask yourself is, are you more interested in process design and optimization using simulation tools and math to help an organization, whether that's a factory, bank, or even restaurant, maximize performance and profits? Or are you more interested in the functionality of a product like designing, manufacturing, and assembling a Tesla Model X or iPhone 15 using CAD and simulation tools under time and budget constraints such that the product can withstand a range of internal temperatures, stresses, as well as external forces and can be operated safely and ergonomically by the user. So now that we have a good sense of the curriculum, 
Let's compare the annual salaries for both mechanical and industrial engineers to see what the current and future job outlook looks like for these two types of engineers. Let's begin with the salary breakdown for industrial engineers. We see that the median salary is $95,300, while the lowest 10% and highest 10% made $60,850 and $129,620 respectively. Obviously, things like years of experience and work location would contribute to this salary gap, so someone with 10 plus years experience working in California will probably be amongst the top 5% of earners. The number of jobs in 2020 was 292,200 and it's expected to see an eye-opening 14% increase in jobs between 2020 and 2030, which is way above average compared to the overall engineering field. Now moving on to mechanical engineering, we see that the median salary is $90,160 while the lowest 10% and the highest 10% made $58,410 and $141,060 respectively. The median salary of both industrial and mechanical engineers is essentially the same. The total number of available mechanical engineering jobs in 2020 was 299,200, which is just slightly more than the number of industrial engineering jobs. And job security will not be something you will have to worry about for both professions. Aside from the curriculum, salary, and job outlook, the last component we'll look at is prestige. For some people, it's all about the respect. The way I have defined prestige is how well known is the company you work at, and I assume that the larger the company, the more prestige it has. For all intents and purposes, we'll assume that the job title is not correlated with prestige. Consequently, I have evaluated prestige solely based on the number of top 100 Fortune 500 companies that offer industrial and mechanical engineering jobs. It came down to the wire and here are the results. 36 out of the 100 companies offer related mechanical engineering jobs, including Amazon, Apple, Alphabet, ExxonMobil, Microsoft, Ford, GM, Chevron, Dell, Marathon, Facebook, J&J, &J, General Electric, Intel, Procter & Gamble, Lockheed Martin, Valero Energy, Boeing, HP, Raytheon, Tyson Foods, Pfizer, Caterpillar, Energy Transfer, Dow, General Dynamics, Nike, Northrop Grumman, John Deere, Abbott Laboratories, Exelon, Coca-Cola, Honeywell, Thermo Fisher, 3M, and Tesla. By contrast, 54 out of the 100 companies offered industrial engineering jobs, including Walmart, Amazon, Apple, CVS Health, United Health Group, McKesson, Amerisource Bergen, Kroger, Ford, GM, Chevron, Target, Citigroup, Meta, UPS, Johnson & Johnson, General Electric, Intel, Procter & Gamble, PepsiCo, FedEx, Philips 66, Lockheed Martin, Disney, Archer Daniels Midland, Albertsons, Valero Energy, Boeing, HP, Raytheon, Cisco, Morgan Stanley, HCA Healthcare, Cisco, Charter Communications, Merck, Public Supermarkets, Allstate, Tyson Foods, Pfizer, Caterpillar, Oracle, American Express, General Dynamics, Nike, Northrop Grumman, John Deere, Abbott Laboratories, Exelon, Coca-Cola, Honeywell, Thermo Fisher, 3M, and Tesla. All right, summarizing everything we talked about. The curriculum for industrial engineering and mechanical engineering are neck and neck in terms of difficulty. What's common between industrial engineering and mechanical engineering is the math, physics, and engineering problem solving mindset. While industrial engineering classes focus on equipping students with knowledge rooted in math and simulation, as well as modeling tools to design, predict, and optimize processes, mechanical engineering classes classes are geared towards students wishing to gain expertise in product design, manufacturing, and engineering computation tools to develop products rooted in mass, motion, forces, and energy. Moving on to salary, industrial engineers and mechanical engineers make similar amounts of money. The median salary for industrial engineers and mechanical engineers is for all intents and purposes equal. However, the projected job growth between 2020 and 2030 for industrial engineering is way above average at 14%, while mechanical engineering should expect to see a growth rate of 7%, which is average. Finally, the prestige level that comes with mechanical engineering and industrial engineering are both 10 out of 10, 
if I had to give it a score and you will have no issues finding a job at a big name company regardless of which one you decide to pursue. At the end of the day, the goal is to pick a major that you can build a career out of and enjoy doing for a lifetime. There's really no right or wrong answer when it comes to choosing mechanical or industrial engineering. You might be someone who already knows that your dream job is to do process design and optimization at an automotive plant or to design the housing of an iPhone 20. I think knowing what you want already in college is fantastic, but rarely is that the case and more often times than not, you won't know exactly what you want until after graduation. If this applies to you, you can't go wrong with either mechanical or industrial engineering. Both are exceptionally versatile and offer excellent job security. And then if you're that person who finds industrial and mechanical engineering to be equally attractive, then I recommend going with mechanical engineering because it will be easier for you to transition into an industrial engineering role versus switching from industrial to mechanical engineering. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.